God will open doors. God will make a way. God will fix things that were broken. He will fix relationships and marriages. He will fix conversation. He will fix everything from your body, health. Come on, somebody. Right down to the soles of your feet. Amen. God ain't interested in your outward appearance. He's interested in your soul. And what your soul would dictate to how your flesh is going to respond. Let me read this again, because this is my key verse. Verse 20, 22. Servants obey in all things, your master, according to the flesh. Now where I service, not performing only when others are watching. Right? Now I servants, as members are man pleasers, because folks do all kinds of things to please somebody else. Just to get a promotion. Just to get a raise. Brown nosing. Licking up to one another. Being on somebody's side, knowing they wrong. Oh, I, I come on now. Long as long as I'm getting paid, I'm gonna agree with them. Amen. I gotta get my money first. I don't care what they say. They can do whatever they want. They ain't talking about right and wrong. They ain't talking about good and bad. Long as the boss lady and the boss man is right, I'm in agreement with them. But they can be wrong too. That's why if you ain't got good or nothing good to say about somebody, just think about the Lord for a moment. If you figure you can't find no words to say when you know something ain't right, just think about the Lord for a moment. What would Jesus do? What would God say about this? And he's already watching me. And he's waiting for your response. And sometimes the best wisdom in the world is to say, I don't know. Because sometimes we start explaining things. You know how folks can be in, in you got them in my family just like you got them in yours. They start running off at the mouth talking about something they don't even know nothing about. You heard them doing Thanksgiving turkey. I ain't hear too many amen. I know y'all ate some turkey together. Don't, don't look at me like that. You see, it's important to understand that whatever we do, we, we do it in singleness of heart. See, a double-minded man, a double-minded woman is unstable in all their ways. But when you're single-minded, in your heart about serving God, it ain't nothing God going to hold back from you. I can't convince you clear enough the clarity of what God has in store for you. Amen? Somebody say amen. amen. It's important to understand. Look at somebody and say, who eyes are you pleasing? You see, it's important to understand. Then the Bible said, and I want you to think about this morning. I'm thinking about a man by the name of Enoch. And Enoch was the oldest son of Cain, and Cain killed Abel. And Enoch was the grandson of Adam and Eve. Y'all got that? And the Bible said that this man pleased God with his walk. Although his father was the first murderer, he didn't follow in his father's footsteps. But he walked so well before God that the Bible said it pleased God and God took him like he was. Now, I don't know about you. It's been bothering me. And I put this question before the Lord. If Enoch is not dead, then where is he at? Y'all ain't never thought about it. That tell me, Junior, that, that he might be walking around somewhere. Come on, somebody. In my lifetime, I see some strange character going and coming. I didn't stop to ask them who they are, but they look like they've been here a long time. Come on, somebody. But the Bible said this man walked with God, and God was well pleased with him. You see, he knew he was close to God, but his life satisfied God, and God watched on everything he done. Everywhere he went, God saw his walk. Everywhere he went, he satisfied God. And to a point that God took him to a place that he's still alive today. Now, if my mouth served me correct, that man got to be close to about 10,000 years old. You see, some of y'all look at me like I lost my mind. Because you say 10,000 years, ain't nobody living that long. Well, with man, is impossible. 
but with God all things are possible. Amen. That's how I know when God is, that the Bible telling us and teaching you and I that this man was so right before God, that he was so precious in the eyesight of God, that God loved him so much that God couldn't even kill him. Amen. Can you imagine that? God let him live. Come on, somebody. Ain't but two men in the Bible that ever lived and never died. Enoch and Elijah. Come on, somebody. So if it ain't Enoch you seen, it's got to be Elijah. Come on, somebody. They're still walking around somewhere. I don't know if they're down in Jerusalem. Oh, come on, somebody. Oh, they didn't call a boat to the United States. I don't know where they are. They might be on the island. Amen. You don't know where they are. The point I'm trying to make is that these men satisfy God. They please God with their walk. You see, you can easily try to satisfy a man. Come on, somebody. You get your annual evaluation. Outstanding employee. I get one. Come on, somebody. I ain't ashamed to tell you I get outstanding every year. You don't have to say amen. I know what I'm talking about. It's nice to know when somebody can look on you and they can't find nothing. Oh, you can judge and condemn. You can guess and estimate. You can think what you thought, but you really don't know. Come on, somebody. I tell my boss lady, I tell those I work with, if you believe in what I'm doing, put it in cash. See, some of y'all scared to ask for cash. You want to ask the week off. That's why I got annual leave for. You want to be off two or three days. That's why I got mental health days. When I don't want to be putting up with nobody, come on, somebody. I just say I ain't feeling well today. I'm calling in SL. I didn't say I was sick. I said I need a mental health day. Some of y'all call up on the phone. <coughs> Excuse me, I'm sorry. Rattling paper all on the phone. Excuse me. I ain't going to be able to. Excuse me. I'm sorry. All oh, making up all that kind of stuff. Talking about you sick. And there you are down there stopping shop. Come on, somebody. All at the mall. And don't run into your balls like the balls, man. They see you all down on the TV and tell in front of Fox 25. That look like Reverend Watkins going fast there. What are you trying to say? I'm saying whatever you do, you please God. Amen. Come on, somebody. Amen. I'm not saying there are days when you don't feel well. Amen? I'm not saying there are days when you don't feel up to where you should be. Amen? Amen. But you got to remember, whatever you do, you do it unto the Lord. Amen. God will give you the strength in your body to accomplish the goal that he set in your heart. Amen. Somebody say amen. amen. You see this man, he not walk with God. He satisfied God. Amen. Elijah walked with God. He satisfied God. And let me tell you about somebody who was sick in the Bible that most people don't preach and teach about. Her name was Mary Magdalene. When you study the character of Mary Magdalene, the Bible says she was possessed with seven spirits. Seven spirits. Unclean spirit. And the spirit, she was so ill, she was physically, morally, and emotionally sick. And she was in a village called Magdalene. That was one of the biggest fishing villages around the Sea of Galilee. And she heard about Jesus. She heard about this man and the power that he was on his healing campaign. And she was seeking this man out. And the Bible says she finally caught up with Christ over at Simon the leper's house. It's amazing how God can clean somebody up and they forgot where they came from. They forgot their praise report. They forgot their praise report and what God did in their life. They forgot their testimony and what God brought them through. They forgot to satisfy him that died for them on the cross. This Mary Magdalene, that was full of spirits. The Bible said everything from epilepsy to all kind of demons that attacked her in the night. She couldn't get rid of them. They wouldn't let her sleep at night. 
But there was one in the village. 